as, as a first speaker. Thank you. Well, Richard, thank you uh, very much uh, indeed. Good morning. It's great to be able to join you uh, today. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a standing ovation, let alone know I'm going to have one before I've even started uh, the speech. So that's hopefully a good, a good start and a good uh, omen. But uh, I actually wanted to start by saying a, a genuine thank you. Uh, thank you uh, to all the county sports partnerships who are represented here and uh, who are working hard across the country. Uh, obviously, in particular, uh, for your, the ongoing work that you're doing uh, to help schools uh, maximise the impact of the primary PE and sport premium. And your guidance really is, is vital, uh, not just to brokering those relationships uh, between schools, coaches, uh, clubs uh, and leisure providers, uh, but actually in passing on that, that love of sport to the next generation, something that I hope that we share. Because uh, if uh, you uh, haven't already guessed um, or seen it before, and I'm hoping in a moment the picture will appear uh, behind me, there we go, uh, that's me. Uh, that's me imitating my uh, childhood uh, idol, Big Joe Corrigan, uh, the uh, Manchester City and sometimes England goalkeeper from the late 1970s, early 80s, giving my age away. Uh, but in my eyes, no one came close to matching uh, his brilliance, albeit I was watching Manchester City uh, in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, even when he conceded that goal against Tottenham in the uh, FA Cup final replay in 1981 uh, for us to lose 3-2, uh, he still took away the man of the match, and for me, he was always uh, man of the match. Uh, I'd hazard a guess, though, that he's not your sporting hero. Uh, don't feel ashamed by that, uh, but I'm sure that each of you has your own version uh, of uh, that picture, uh, because it's our individual love of sport uh, that brings us all uh, together today. We're united by those, those little individual passions that ignite the whole uh, sporting industry and recognise that together we can achieve so much more. And unless we pass that passion on to the next generation, we'll never know uh, what kind of talent walks through the doors of our schools day in and day out. Because every child in every part of the country deserves to find that one sport that they are really passionate about. And I'm convinced that CSPs are the people to turn that national vision into a local reality. And let me explain why. National partners have worked hard across the sporting fraternity to agree a consensus on what our priorities should be and where our efforts should be focused. And when it comes to sport and physical activity, with a single clear message, schools will be in no doubt about what's expected of them. For every child in every school and for future generations to enjoy the same benefits. The single overriding priority has got to be sustainability. And with that in mind, as a government, we've targeted £450 million of funding over three years into the PE and sport premium to improve sports for children in primary schools across the country. And since 2013, 18,000 schools have received that funding. And that's enabled those thousands of schools to invest in and improve the quality of sports they offer and improve access to a wider variety of activities for their children. An independent research by Natsen into the use and impact of the premium has so far found that a 91% increase in the quality of PE teaching, as well as a 13-minute increase in curriculum time being dedicated to PE. Now, that is important progress, but to really embed and sustain that progress, the Prime Minister has since personally pledged 150 million of funding uh, every year for the premium until at least 2020. And although sadly, or people may say happily, uh, I may have moved on, uh, CSPs are in it for the long haul. That's why it's so important that schools uh, everywhere from, from Cornwall to Cumbria and uh, in between work with their CSP to achieve our goal of sustainability. And it's these local knowledge hubs that have been built through your expertise as coaches, club leaders and community networks that can really make a difference. And with such a powerful reach, you've so much to offer schools. Cumbria's Impact Factor project has not only considered the provision of the premium, but measured the impact of it too. 
because the work doesn't stop when the money's been spent. In many respects, that's when the work begins, to assess, to evaluate, and to prove that money is making a real difference to the sporting achievements of young people. Howard Todd's excellent work has been cascaded to Cumbrian subject leaders and helped to devise realistic lesson plans, evaluate what external providers have contributed, and crucially, to put the child back at the centre of PE lessons. And at the opposite end of the country, there's equally impressive work going on. This year has seen the final of the Cornish Indoor Rowing Championships in the Cornish School Games. With 255 competitors from 15 schools and colleges, it's a record year. And using the Go Race Indoors framework, the event brought together British Rowing, the Cornwall Sports Partnership, Newquay Sports Centre, Trithera School, Trevigla School and Carradine Gig Club. That's quite a mouthful, uh, but it's uh, also a partnership that's working, if ever I've heard it. And that's the sort of collaboration that will be crucial to the future success of school sports. Now, I know CSPs are already sharing best practice with, with one another, and this convention is another opportunity to do just that. But this is something I want to see more of, and I'm sure you do too, throughout the country and alongside other local sporting organisations. So let's see networks working together to share and overcome the similar issues they face and provide the best level of access for every child. Rural areas of the south can learn from rural areas of the north, and inner city CSPs should be matching uh, leisure centres uh, with uh, underused facilities, with schools that are bursting at the seams. After all, their grounds are often separated by less than a mile. The Essex CSP has, in the spirit of joined up working, dispatched five primary expert practitioners to 80 local schools to offer one-on-one -on -one support and assess staff training needs. They've also freed up Friday afternoons to run workshops for primary school coordinators. And at the request of local schools, the Northamptonshire CSP has set up a fantastic coach campaign. That's its name, it's not my adjective, um, but I'm sure it is fantastic. Uh, to help schools recruit the right coaches and uphold the relevant national guidance and safeguarding checks. They also coordinate the county's school swimming programme. And every county, not just Northamptonshire, should have access to a helpful checklist of guidance on sourcing suitable candidates and using them effectively. That's why, in recognition of the valuable role coaches play in improving PE, I visited Berrymead Junior School last week to launch the new coaching portal. And many of those involved in developing the portal attended the launch, and the list of organisations reads a little bit like a, a who's who in the world of sports education. But it's that closer working that will help schools spend their premium wisely and make the task of employing a great coach that much easier. And it was fantastic to be joined at the launch by bronze medalist Bianca Williams, who talked about how having a great coach helped her to believe in herself, overcome that fear of failure, to find purpose and desire to push her talents to the limit. And whilst at Bury Mead, I got to play a sport I'd never come across uh, before, and I'm quite a sports nut. It's called Wetagu, a sort of cross between uh, table tennis uh, and badminton. Uh, now, I confess, uh, I got a little bit carried away uh, despite playing uh, against uh, two of the junior school children. Uh, and uh, as Mike uh, Diaper knows from uh, Sport England, uh, I took uh, a lot to be dragged off uh, the court. But it was great to hear and see for myself that Berrymead has run the first ever national seminar on Watagu and are making use of other local facilities in the area to promote PE and sport in the community. <laughs> but again, this is where CSPs can make a difference because I heard that Berrymead's partnership with the Westway Climbing Centre was all down to the brokerage of London Sport, the CSP in the area. Pupils at Berrymead are not only getting subsidised climbing lessons, but at lunch times, they're rushing to be the first on the new climbing walls. It's not unless children get to try a range of sports that they can work out which one might be the perfect match for their abilities. And thanks to London Sport, pupils in Acton are having a go at a sport many inner city ch children miss out on. The coaching portal will help link local CSPs directly to head teachers and local experts. But CSPs aren't just a useful signposting tool 
for schools. CSPs are full of trainers and coaches, many in this room, who in their own right are, are able to help schools and improve PE and sport. And in recognition of this, I'm delighted to tell you today that we will continue to fund the volunteer leaders and coaches program into the next financial year. The funding we've provided since 2011 to support school games looks set to exceed its target of 1,470 volunteers by March this year, and so much has already been achieved. Volunteers are being recruited at a younger age, uh, they're being offered uh, formal qualifications, and ultimately sustainability in the volunteering network is gradually being built up. And I saw just how uh, exciting and fun the school games are for myself when I attended the Bedford and Luton Level 3 games last year. The atmosphere uh, was, as you would expect, really electric. And in light of such great events, the department will continue funding you to build capacity for the games in the future. In addition to boosting volunteer numbers, School Games has been instrumental in making sure that we talk about access to sport for every child in every part of the country. And disabled children are very much part of that. So when we say every child, we mean it. Every single child, regardless of their ability, has the right to discover a passion for sport in the same way you or I have. The legacy and the sporting heroism seen in the Paralympic Paralympic Games should be enough to convince anyone of the potential achievement of disabled athletes. The inclusivity of the school games has seen nearly 30,000 disabled children take part in the programme and created hundreds of volunteering opportunities for them too. The Inclusive Community Training Programme has just topped 1,000 trainees, a real achievement. And last month I announced the extension of the projectability program for another year with £300,000 of additional funding to do just that. Schools will be able to carry on offering competitive uh, entry for their young students with disabilities at every level of school. And we have a similar responsibility to increase the number of girls taking part in sports. As the only program where girls outnumber boys, making up 52% of the participants, the school games is an important way to continue levelling the playing field for young women and girls. I visited Lambeth uh, Academy last week and saw United Learning's XL programme, not only working to increase physical activity among girls, but also to teach them about body confidence and teamwork too. Olympian mentors like skier Chemi Alcott and hockey player Alex Danson were there to encourage girls to get involved in sport and their confidence and positive at attitude was infectious. Because it's important for girls to know that women like Chemi, Alex uh, and Bianca didn't get to where they are today by passing up chances to stretch their physical horizons, but by boldly stepping up and discovering their sporting talent, together with all the social, emotional and, yes, educational benefits that it brings. So, with the new coaching portal, extension of the Volunteer Leaders and Coaches Grant, 2015 is looking to be a year full of real opportunities and exciting developments for CSPs all over England. I know, of course, that working with schools is only one strand of the work that you do. But our vision for a sustainable sporting legacy in schools is only possible with your expertise. Schools need you to share that with them. So I want to set a challenge for every CSP leader here today. Um, it's not going to be asking you to get up at 7.30 and go for a run. Uh, but I'm sure uh, many of you uh, will do so. But uh, I would ask you to do this. Pick up the phone uh, and introduce yourself to at least one sports teacher in every school on your patch. Find out their name, call them, and offer your services. You'll be surprised just how much your knowledge of the local sporting scene could transform sport for primary school children. After all, today's primary school children are tomorrow's secondary school children. They're the future members of sports clubs and teams, and perhaps even the stars of the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Now, I was inspired by Big Joe, for whatever reason. But it's now not my time. It's my children's time. So I want to see every single child benefiting from an inspiring coach or the chance to try an exciting new sport. 
and in doing so being indebted to your passion and your commitment. So thank you for listening and I hope you have a fantastic convention. Yeah, I'm